flight to leave for Valley, Mexico. Now, you travel a lot, so it's a long flight to Mexico. What do you take along to keep you entertained? Well, yeah, first of all, I think it's will be around 20, over 20 hours to travel to Mexico. But before Mexico, I'm actually going to stop in, uh, in California to see my friend and uh, spend some holiday over there. But on the long flights, usually I have um, a, a book with me. I read something. Uh, I don't read normally so much uh, when I'm home, but when traveling, when in the airplane, so it's a fantastic way to, to spend time by reading. And then watching movies uh, from, a, from a laptop or the, from the entertainment system what the, what the airplane is providing. So what are you reading right now? What are you taking along? Uh, I, will, I am reading um, it's a book which is telling about the mental preparations in a sport. And then the other book is, is made by Juhani Tamminen, uh, an, an ex-hockey, uh, ice hockey coach, which is also uh, based on a uh, mentally decide mentally from, from the sportsmen. All right, so you're going for the heavy literature this time, one of the, the light stuff. Yeah, I haven't actually been on light stuff for a while, so yeah. it's been a bit of change. So anything special that you're planning to eat or drink while you're in Mexico? When you go to Mexico, uh, it's... You have to always take some tacos, and uh, also there is a really nice uh, restaurant with the with the steaks. You have to uh, eat steaks, and uh, then for the drinks, uh, people who enjoy beer, there is um, uh, yeah yeah it's a good good for that. But I don't drink so much beer, but. Uh, they are providing a good beer over there. Did you have a, a favorite stage in Rally Mexico? It's that stage, I have a st favorite stage. Uh, it is uh, three on, on Sunday morning, and it is the uh, the longest stage of the rally. It will be around 52 kilometers. It is also at the same time the most difficult one, and uh, I think the name of that stage is Guana Guanajuato. And um, unfortunately, last year I was doing really, really well until I rolled. So uh, this year yeah. I want to get it to the finish. Do better this time. Exactly. Why do you find it extra difficult? Because the character of the of the stage is changing many times. It starts with the narrow, with the technical places over the over the over the rocks and between the like um, this inside of and outside of the corners, a lot of like a concrete blocks, and um, then in the midway it gets a bit faster and it's quite open, but then towards the end it gets really, really fast and wide road. So at least three times the character of the road is changing. Mm -hmm. So when the, the track changes, do you change the way the car is sort of set up? Do you, I guess you have the gravel road and snow rally and so on. How do you change the car to adjust to these settings? Uh, the biggest difference is what we do between the like gravel and, uh, and snow, or compared to tarmac, is the suspension. Uh, when you are on uh, snow, usually you run the softest car you can make, and then on gravel you are a bit stiffer than on snow. But then on, on tarmac, usually you are really stiff with the car. It needs to be like a racing car. Uh, but uh, compared to Sweden, which was the second round of the championship, uh, and now this Mexico will be the third round. So the main difference is that you go a little bit stiffer with the suspension. Uh, but not not big changes, uh, and then you have to you have to run some uh, extra um, uh, like uh, protection on the car because of the gravel is 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 harder for the car itself than than the snow conditions. Okay, so I understand a lot of this rally is at an altitude. Do you notice that when you're racing? Does it have an impact on how you breathe or other things like that? Yeah, it's it's correct. There is a big effect on the altitude. The rally is driven over 2,000 meters from the sea level. And what is the difference is that the air is thinner than on the sea level. When air gets thinner, basically the burning is, is, is smaller. And uh, that happens on the engine side as well, because uh, oxy um, oxygen is, uh, is thinner, the burning in the inside the engine is, uh, is less which is producing the power. And I think normally if you 
you drive in Europe compared to Mexico, I think you have like 75% of the engine power available in Mexico compared to Europe. So yeah, you really feel it when you go first time out there uh, on the stage. Yeah, so not just you, also the car suffers <coughs> from the yes, lack the of oxygen. Exactly. So how would you describe the atmosphere around Rally Mexico? I mean, we think of the Mexicans as this sort of passionate, loud people. Does that show in the rally in any way? Yes, it is. They have a quite a lot of passion. Uh, I remember even a couple of years ago I was running. Uh, I did I did for the run uh, before the rally, and people were stopping me while I was running because they recognized me, <laughs> and they wanted to have a photo or, or an autograph, and that doesn't happen so much in the in a Europe. So. They are big. They have quite a passion to have an autograph or take a photo, and um, you can see you can see them quite uh, clear in the in the near the service park. In the mountains, you don't have you have a good amount of people, but you don't have a crazy amount of people in the mountains. But uh, when they are there, they are really passionate, and and they have like um they can they can go there for let's say, for one day earlier when the stage is driven and they go for the picnic and they have a like little camp, uh, camping area there they, with the tents and staying on overnight. And so it's kind of a uh, bit like uh, some excitement for them at the same time than, than the rally. Cool. So you and Nico have been together as a team for some time now. Do you socialize or travel together? Yeah, normally we, we always travel together, so you spend with your co-driver more time than you <laughs> with your <laughs> girlfriend or, or wife, so because we are traveling around 220 days uh, per year. So sometimes it's, it's we have always, you know, it, sometimes we have a lot of talk, things to talk, but then there are occasions when you have already spoken all the stories, so <laughs> then it's a quite a quiet moment, but uh, the ma main thing is that on the mental side that you are with your core driver that you are you are a bit the same that uh, it's what like me and Mika we don't uh, we, we don't really argue with things we are in a boat boat on the same side on the or similar with the with the mental side that uh, we just um, if there is something uh, which is uh, annoying or something just then we stay quiet not necessarily, <laughs> depending on the result. Yeah. That would have an impact. So, um, what was your craziest experience in Mexico ever? You've been there a few times now. Yes, I've been there, I think, first time in 2006, and uh, since that, every year. This is actually a nice story. Um, that this was two years ago. Uh, after the rally, we went to Argentinian restaurant. Oh. And when we came there, we wanted to go to the rally party. And uh, that time, a very good friend of mine, Henrik Solberg, was with us. And um, basically, uh, we were looking for a taxi. And uh, there was no uh, taxis around. So what Henning decided to do is he jumped on the, on the main road, and he was stopping the next car which was coming. And it was a police car. Well, he didn't really ask anything. He just opened the doors, and we all we went in. And and then the policeman was a bit surprised, and and he ending said that uh, we we want to go to, for the party. I said, well, I'm not the taxi really, but he said, no, no, no problem. You just take us. And and then he decided to take us. And on the way, Henning was so excited that uh, he asked the policeman a few times to put the um, the lights on and everything. But no, he 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 re refused to do that. But then uh, Henning was opening the side window and he was shouting himself like ooh ooh ooh, ooh, ooh. so keeping the uh, uh, excite excitement on. And uh, finally, the guy, uh, the policeman, took us to the uh, the, the loca right location. Everything was very good. And I said, I gave him a little bit of money. I said, this is for the coffee, and uh, he was happy. <laughs> yes. So one last question. What would you miss about Mexico when you leave? Normally, when you are, if it's a very, very cold in your country when you leave, and uh, you go over there where it's when it's hot, and when you leave from the hot, and you know if you have to go for the quite the cold condition, that is what you miss. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Thank you.
very much, and I wish you great luck. Thank you.